Physical assessment of the unwell or deteriorating patient should be carried out according to a systematic A, B, C, D and E approach, where A, B, C, D and E stand for airway, breathing, circulation, disability, covering the level of consciousness, and exposure. Where deviations from physiological normal values are observed, or potentially serious or life-threatening problems discovered, they should be treated before moving on to the next step and each intervention assessed in a timely manner to observe its effect. When the A, B, C, D and E assessment is completed, the practitioner should reassess the patient, beginning again at A and systematically moving all the way through to E. This short clip will demonstrate a comprehensive A, B, C, D, E assessment of a simulated patient. Hello Mr Smith, my name's David, I'm one of the nurses. My colleague's asked me to come and see you because she says you're not feeling very well. Can you tell me a little bit about that? I had a chest infection a couple of days ago and then today I've been feeling really unwell. Is there anything that makes it worse? Getting up to go to the toilet. John is talking, so his airway is patent. If John did not respond, the practitioner may have to consider getting further help and then intervening to manage or secure John's airway before moving on to assess B. This means initially laying John flat and opening the airway using basic manoeuvres such as the head tilt chin lift or a jaw thrust manoeuvre. Safe suctioning of any liquid secretions. Simple adjuncts like an oropharyngeal airway or a nasopharyngeal airway adjunct can be used. Depending on the practitioner's level of skill and experience, a more advanced airway adjunct such as an ideal can be used. Okay, I'm just going to have a little look, if I can expose the top of your chest, have a little look at your breathing if that's okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to have a listen to your chest if that's alright. Just breathe normally for me. This is a little bit cold I'm afraid. I'm just going to tap on your chest as well. I'm just going to put a probe on your finger if that's okay. Okay. I'm just going to give you a little bit more oxygen. Place this over your face if that's okay. John is using accessory muscles to help him breathe and is struggling to maintain his saturation. The nurse has administered high flow oxygen via non rebreather mask to improve John's oxygen saturations. He will need to reassess this observation and titrate the amount of oxygen delivered to the effect this has on his monitored oxygen levels and will also need to assess the method of administration. Other skills, such as auscultation using a stethoscope, to listen for air entry, crackles, wheezes or other added sounds. Percussion of the chest is used to observe for areas of hyperresonance, suggestive of air in the pleural cavity, or dullness, suggestive of fluid or consolidation in the chest. Percussion can be used to assess this element of the ABCDE assessment depending on the practitioner's skills and experience. In this case, auscultation reveals air entry with crackles throughout with reduced breath sounds at the bases. The percussion note is slightly dull towards the bases. I think the chest infection is making you a little bit more unwell. We probably need to give you some more stronger antibiotics. So I'll go and have a word with one of the doctors and get them to come and review you. Okay. Pfft. 
I'm just going to take your pulse if that's okay. The nurse feels a pulse, noting rate, regularity and the volume and quality of the pulse. As John has a palpable radial artery pulse, his systolic blood pressure can be roughly estimated at around 80 to 90 millimetres of mercury. During this assessment, other observations can be noted about whether or not John has cool or warm peripheries, and whether or not the skin is dry, clammy or edematous. John has cool, clammy peripheries, but appears flushed and warm centrally. His pulse is regular, but the nurse feels it is slightly weak and thready. I'm just going to put some ECG leads on your chest, if that's okay. For rapid assessment of electrical activity in the patient's myocardium, attach the leads for a 3-lead ECG. Assess the cardiac rate and rhythm, comparing the ECG with the manual peripheral pulse assessment, noting any variation between the two. A 12-lead ECG allows clinicians to gain three-dimensional view of the heart, identifying cardiac arrhythmias and abnormalities or damage as a result of myocardial infarction or other acute coronary syndromes. Acute treatment of the collapsed patient should not be delayed in order to obtain a 12-lead ECG. I'm just going to take your blood pressure. Let's put this cuff on your arm. If no, using an electronic blood pressure monitor, ensure the use of an appropriately sized cuff that fits well. A manual blood pressure technique using auscultation and manual sphygmomanometer may be more accurate, but takes more time and more expertise to perform. Capillary refill time is an important assessment of perfusion. Press the thumb firmly onto the top of the sternum for 5 seconds and release. The time taken for the capillary bed to refill should be less than 2 seconds. Healthcare practitioners should not attempt to gain vascular access unless they have been trained to do so. Consider the risks and benefits of intravenous access for the patient, the available sites and the size and type of access required. Very unwell patients will have poorly filled veins and may need advanced vascular access such as a central venous line inserted under ultrasound guidance by clinicians with specialist skills. In an emergency, the intraosseous route may be used to gain vascular access. If you are appropriately trained to cannulate and need to gain vascular access in a patient who you suspect is deteriorating, cite an 18 gauge or larger cannula in the antecubital fossa on the patient's non-dominant side, or if necessary, one cannula in each arm. Where necessary, take blood samples before infusing any fluids or drugs and give consideration to the following. FBC, coagulation screen, cross match if hemorrhage is suspected, Use an ease, which may include troponin if an acute coronary syndrome is suspected, cultures if suspecting sepsis. A venous blood gas will include important values like glucose, lactate and some electrolytes depending on the analyzer used. If you cannot cannulate the patient yourself, ensure the necessary equipment is readily available at the bedside. An arterial blood gas sample requires specialist skills to obtain, but gives key information about the adequacy of ventilation. If the patient has vascular access and is hypotensive, consider the need for a fluid challenge using a crystalloid fluid such as saline or Hartmann's, giving due consideration to actual or potential cardiovascular and renal dysfunction. Give a fluid bolus of 250 or 500 millilitres before reassessing the blood pressure. Try to identify the underlying cause of the hypovolemia and escalate care appropriately. Bear in mind that in younger, fitter patients, the increased ability to compensate for fluid losses will mean that a significant loss of fluid from the circulating volume can occur before a marked drop in systolic pressure is seen. As John is demonstrating signs of poor perfusion, a fluid challenge is indicated. If the nurse has completed the necessary competency assessments to deliver this treatment, 500 millilitres of crystalloid is administered in two boluses and the blood pressure reassessed every five minutes. Have you passed much urine since you've been unwell? We may need to put a urinary catheter in to measure how much urine you're producing. The nurse now completes an assessment of D, 
disability. This refers to John's level of consciousness. Are you okay there, Mr. Smith? Can you open your eyes for me? How are you feeling? Okay. John's level of consciousness has slightly altered and he is now demonstrating early signs of a drop in his level of consciousness that demands ongoing assessment and appropriate escalation of care. The AVPU tool is a useful bedside assessment of consciousness level where A means that the patient is alert, V means that the patient only responds to voice, P means that the patient is only responsive to painful stimulation such as a firm squeeze of the trapezius muscle and U refers to the patient being unresponsive. This is an emergency. A formal Glasgow Coma Scale score is indicated to establish long-term trends in a patient with neurological changes. Eye opening to command and verbal and motor responses are evaluated to give a score between 15, fully conscious, and 3, where there is no response to stimulation. This assessment takes time and expertise and a GCS score has limited clinical value without the accompanying breakdown of the eye opening, verbal response and motor scores. Just going to take your temperature from your ear and a small sample of blood from your finger, if that's okay. Your temperature is a little bit high, but your blood sugar is okay. I'll try and get you something for that. I think the infection is making you worse, so we need to give you some stronger antibiotics. I'll go and speak to one of the doctors to get them to come and review you, and we can sort out the treatment that we need to give to you. An abnormally high or low core temperature can be a cause of altered level of consciousness. Ensure all patients are appropriately and comfortably covered with clothing or bedding to ensure comfort, and maintenance of normothermia, whilst treating underlying causes of pyrexia. With the blood glucose in the range of 4 to 10 millimoles per litre, no further action is required. Raised or lowered blood glucose can adversely affect level of consciousness. Check the blood glucose levels in all patients with an altered level of consciousness, irrespective of whether or not they are a diabetic. Check that the patient can move their limbs according to command and that they have normal sensation and power. Okay, Mr. Smith, can you squeeze my fingers? Good, can you pull me towards you and push me away and let go? Good, can you just wriggle your toes for me? Good, can you lift this leg up? Lovely, and this one, well done. Mr. Smith, I'm just going to check you over now to see if you've got any rashes or anything else that we need to be concerned about. Just pull the curtain round first, OK? Ensure the patient's dignity at all times and use a chaperone if you think it is necessary. Get assistance from others if you need to log roll or move the patient. Look for rashes, swelling, bruising, bleeding or any other important clinical signs of illness or injury that the patient has not already reported or indicated to you. Visualise the patient, top to toe, front and back. The ABCDE assessment is now complete. The nurse has assessed John systematically, moving through the elements of airway, breathing, circulation, disability and exposure. When he detected a problem, the nurse dealt with it immediately to the best of his ability, acting within his clinical capacity and job description. Having completed the whole assessment, the nurse can instigate the appropriate escalation protocol, in this case informing the nurse in charge and contacting the ward doctor. The full ABCDE assessment informs the nurse handover to the doctor and allows the doctor to safely prioritise seeing John. Using a systematic approach to this communication, prevents miscommunication or delays in referral or response. A structured system like SBAR can be used to communicate the following. Situation. What is happening now? Background. Who is the patient and why are they here? Assessment.
what has been found and observed. Recommendation. How quickly would you like the patient to be seen and what treatment you think they will need initially? Hello, is that Dr Rice? Hi, it's David here from the Medical Assessment Unit. I'm just phoning you because I've just assessed a patient uh, who has been in for the last 24 hours who was referred in by his GP following a chest infection for approximately a week. He's a 22-year-old gentleman by the name of John Smith. He's otherwise fit and well, not a smoker, not diabetic, no other real medical problems. Um, and overnight, uh, he has become more unwell. When I've assessed him, his airway is open and patent. His respiratory rate is 22 breaths a minute, and he is using some accessory muscles. His oxygen saturations were 92% off oxygen. I have given him some high flow oxygen and they've raised to 97%. When I listen to his chest, he's got air entry throughout, although he's got some crackles in his right base and percussion note was normal. His pulse rate is about 117, it's regular, he's got a blood pressure of 92 over 58 and he's also got a capillary refill time of 4 seconds. I managed to get a second uh, cannula in and I've taken some bloods off. I've sent an FBC, use knees, coag screen and blood cultures. I believe he might have sepsis, so I have given him a 500ml bolus of saline and his blood pressure responded and it's now up to 99 over 63. He's a little bit more drowsy than he was last night, although he is opening his eyes to voice, so he's scoring V on Avpu, and his temperature is 38.7. He's warm centrally, a little bit cool peripherally. On exposure, I couldn't see anything. There's no rashes, no uh, bleeding, but he's a little bit uh, mottled peripherally. I'd like you to come and see him urgently. Um, as I said, I believe he's septic. I've given him oxygen and we've given him fluids uh, and I've taken a set of bloods. He'll need an arterial blood gas and also some antibiotics prescribing and let me know if you want him catheterised. Is there anything else you'd like me to do while we wait for you? Okay, yep, no problem. Great, we'll see you shortly. Thank you, bye-bye.